Welcome to the basics of relays and HVAC systems. Today, we'll explore key components like the coil, the switch or the contact, and ultimately how relays work and how they're used. A relay is an electrically operated switch. It generally allows a lower voltage control circuit to control one or more higher power or higher current circuits, functioning as a critical control mechanism to turn things on and off safely. At its core, a relay consists of a coil, also known as an electromagnet, and a series of electrical contacts. When electrical current passes through the coil, it generates a magnetic field. This magnetic field causes a metal armature to move, opening or closing the contacts attached to it. These contacts are often referred to as switches or contact points. They are the primary conductive part that either disrupts or allows the flow of electricity. They act like little drawbridges, allowing current to pass when closed and preventing flow when open. There are normally open, or NO, and normally closed, or NC, contacts in many relays. Normally open contacts close when the coil is energized while normally closed contacts open under the same condition. So when we say normally open or normally closed, we're saying normally is in the unenergized state. Because relays are generally used for their ability to control a higher voltage or higher power circuit with a lower voltage or lower power signal, they provide isolation between the control circuit and the circuit being controlled which is a crucial aspect in HVAC systems for safety and functionality. A very common example in residential applications is the way we use 24 volts to control all of the higher voltage, often 240 volt components within the HVAC system. By using 24 volts, we can route wiring through walls into thermostats much more safely and easily. Pay attention to the coil or control voltage rating as well as the contact voltage and amperage ratings on a relay to make sure you have the right relay for the application and that you're not going to overload it. Let's cover two common types of relays that are used in HVAC, the 9340 and the ice cube relay. Honestly, I'm picking the ice cube relay because it's clear and you can see through it, which makes it handy for teaching purposes. One of the most common and versatile relays in HVAC systems is the 9340 relay. very similar to another relay called the 9380. It's a multi-purpose relay and it's used for various control applications. The 9340 is a double pole, double throw, or DP DT relay, meaning it has two sets of contacts normally open and normally closed. At its core is the electromagnetic coil, usually rated at 24 volts. When energized, it creates a magnetic field pulling the switch contacts to change the states of the contacts. The 9340 features eight terminals, two for the coil, two common terminals, two normally open, and two normally closed. You'll notice the contacts are in two rows, which are isolated from each other, which in turn are isolated from the coil. 
These contacts are often called dry contacts because they're completely isolated from the power supply used for the coil. This is what allows us to have different voltages for the contacts than we do for the control circuit on the coil. The 9340's versatility allows it to control fan motors and other key components in HVAC systems that draw less than 15 amps. Now let's show the ice cube relay. The ice cube relay is named for its clear cube-like casing. And just like the 9340, it has a coil, an armature, and contacts. Now let's talk about some larger controls that function very much like a relay, but handle higher currents. Here we show a contactor and a starter. A 40 amp two pole contactor is often used in larger residential and light commercial systems. And this two pole contactor has two sets of contact points. It's designed to handle higher amperage up to 40 amps. This is why you'll often see contactors like this controlling compressors that potentially have higher current draw. It operates very similar to a relay. It has a coil, but all of the contacts are normally open and close upon energizing. Another common contactor you see in residential HVAC is the 25 or 30 amp one plus contactor. This type of one plus contactor has only one contact and the other side is a through pole connection. These are common in residential systems where they only need to break one pole of power. They can also be useful in some crankcase heater wiring configurations. Starters are a type of contactor that tend to be larger and they come with an overload. They're designed for starting and stopping motors, usually in commercial and industrial applications, and they provide both control and overload protection. Again, they're basically a large contactor with overload protection, mostly in cases where the motor itself is not internally protected. So unlike relays, contactors and starters handle higher current loads, and they're built with more robust materials to withstand the stress of switching large currents and voltages. Now let's delve deeper into some other types of HVAC controls that operate similarly to relays. One example of an electronic control is a MOSFET which stands for Metal Oxide Semiconductor Field Effect Transistor, which is a type of transistor used for switching electronic signals. It is not the only type, but we're using it as an example here. Unlike relays that use physical movement to open or close circuits, MOSFETs switch electronically. They have three main components, the gate, the drain, and the source. When a voltage is applied to the gate, it creates an electric field that controls the flow of current between the drain and the source, effectively turning the switch on or off, similar to a relay. In most HVAC systems, MOSFETs are found in circuit boards and in digital thermostats, where precise and rapid switching is crucial in a compact space. Now let's look at stack sequencers. Like a relay, stack sequencers use physical components to control sequences and electric heaters and fans. They consist of a heater, and bimetallic disc. And they're used in cases where on or off delays are desired. They're becoming increasingly obsolete as they're usually replaced with modern day electronic controls. When the heater is energized, it warms the bimetallic disc the disc is designed to flex at a specific temperature, closing contacts in a predetermined order. This staggered activation helps manage the electrical load, preventing circuit overloads, especially in cases when you're using electric heaters. The time delay in stack sequencers is governed by the rate of heating and cooling of the bimetallic disc. 
This ensures a sequential startup and shutdown, providing an efficient and controlled process. In summary, a sequencer is using heat rather than electromagnetic field to control the switching. Let's further drive home the way these various controls work by showing them on a diagram and test it with a multimeter. On the left, you see a connection diagram, or point-to-point -point diagram, and on the right, you show a ladder schematic, or schematic diagram in the ladder form. Here, we're going to show the contactor that's used for the compressor and condenser fan, as well as the blower relay, tested with an ohm meter, showing the contacts opening and closing when energized or de-energized. Because the contactor is normally open, the contact points show OL and do not ring out because there is no continuity, meaning no path. When showing the points 23 to 23, this is the plus one contact, which is just a pole, showing that it does have continuity, i.e. a closed circuit. Now let's show this on a contactor in real life. Now we're going to show this on a blower relay, starting with normally open and then going to normally closed. Now let's energize the circuit and show how it switches. Normally open contacts close on the blower relay when the coil is energized. And the normally open contactor goes closed. What was normally open now goes closed when energized, and what was normally closed now goes open when energized. Again, using an ohmmeter and a continuity test to show this. Now showing the same thing on a bench with the two-pole contactor and the one-plus contactor. Understanding relay basics is a key to mastering HVAC system controls. Thanks for watching. If you're willing, give this video a thumbs up and drop us a comment. Don't forget to hit that bell icon to stay updated with all of our future videos. And as a quick reminder, HVAC School isn't just a YouTube channel. Dive deeper with us at our main website, hvacrschool.com. Curious for more knowledge on the go? We've got you covered. Tune into the HVAC School podcast available on all your favorite podcast apps. And while you're at it, join our thriving Facebook group. Also, don't miss out on our free mobile applications available for both iPhone and Android. We're all about community. Vortex by Tex.